Welcome to the Artie Lang Show. Allow me to put on a live commercial read clinic. Thanks to French Quarters Guest Apartments for being our New York City hotel. <laughs> Let them be your headquarters in New York City. Go to FrenchQuartersNY.com to book your next day. Go to FrenchQuartersNY.com to book your next day. You know, people sometimes ask me, like, what was the most impressive thing about working right next to Howard? Like, for eight and a half years, I worked three feet from, like, the Michael Jordan of this business. My favorite thing was the live reads you would do, the commercial reads. <laughs> he hated them. <laughs> uh, the rolling of the eyes. But if, if you close your eyes, he really sounded like Steven Singer was God. <laughs> But you know he's reading it, and it's like he's like he's eating an omelet. He's like Stephen Singer, Robin. How about that, Robin? How about that, Robin? Stephen Singer. Oh, do you like Stephen Singer, right, Artie? You know? <laughs> Dude, that's funny because I used to hear from the sales guys afterwards, and they would be they they would be so mad because he didn't do like you know the entire read. Right. He would cut it off short. Right. And they would be mad, so you know he would. You know, they would have to deal with all the other, like, sales. And, yeah, yeah. and then they have to, and then a, have to say redo. Them, well, are you going to, like, working at a car wash next week? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite exchange I had with him on the air was one time he came on the air and he was mad at me for some reason because we never hung out together. Off the he, goes, he goes, you know, me and you, you know, well, I don't know where he blindsides me. He goes, me and you never hang out. I go, what are you talking about? Off the air, we never hang out. I thought we'd be friends. I go, I'll, I'll hang out with you. What do you think? I, uh, whatever. Uh, he goes, what are you doing Friday night? I said, I don't know. I said, what are you doing Friday night? He goes, I'm going to the Hamptons. I go, can I come? He goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> like Saturday, I got my buddy's wedding, if you want to take me. Uh, so uh, now, Russ, mm. do you, did you work a couple of gigs with Stuttering John? I think it might have been two at most. But... Now, as a, as, a, as, a, as a good established comic, and yeah. you would see that, mm -hmm. How would that make you feel, knowing he was making 10 Gs at the Columbus? Party? Oh, it's but I've been in this business for how long, and I've seen that. <laughs> I mean, that's been forever. I, I said, the, yeah, I was kidding around with Casey one time. My weekend got canceled because uh, the guy told me that Gary the Retard's in town. <laughs> uh, uh, is that true? Yeah. So it's like I can't. I mean. I've been in this business for how long where that's been happening? He, so, I mean, he was, it, it, well, he's of the Seattle, the retards. <laughs> Carry the retards. I mean, here he is, like, you know, the top of the business. Yeah. I mean, he's so funny, this no, guy. He is, he is. And, but and, but that's, and, that is show. And Gary the retard is outdrawing him. Which, that is which, it. That's which what is happens. why he hates his life. Yeah. Well, well, you know, but back to the Stutter and John thing. I mean, it's typical. I mean, he was he. Did he ever feel as though he was a comedian? I mean, I don't think he ever. Ross, you have no idea. No, no, no. no. You have he did, no he idea that the, the level of. And look, I, I actually, I'm a guy who likes John. I do. I think he's the reason we fought the Revolutionary War. I mean, think about it. No one did so much with so little, ever. He, he, he is not a musician, and he had a record deal. Right. Okay, had a major thing. That's not right. a comedian, toured every big club right. in the country. And he has a speech impediment, and he yeah. got the single most coveted announcing job in the history of television. You're he's right. the reason we left Britain. <laughs> But uh, yeah, but no, he. But yeah, the, the kind of scratch, and he would, and he would drop the checks. You know how many times I found the ten thousand dollar check made out to him, like in the hotel lobby. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, I did a gig with him a couple of times. And he would drop the check. That's crazy. I'm glad it means a lot to you, John. He's not even a druggie or a drunk or anything. <laughs> oh, he, he paid like me. Whippets. Oh, he paid right, me fifty dollars a couple of times to do shows with you guys. Right. Fifty bucks. Really? Mm. Fifty dollars. Why don't you tell me that? I would have doubled that in a heartbeat. <laughs> I know you would have. No, really, fifty dollars? Yeah, yeah. Well, you got pay you got paid in Poontang, my friend. Yeah. So I'm not gonna lie, this kid did all right on the road for himself. We did okay. We did okay. <laughs> he does it right in town. I don't think he needs to go on the road. That's true. <laughs> That's I love Charles Bukowski. We got to watch that film again. <laughs> now, Russ. Uh, no, but I, who now aggravates you? Who's the stuttering John of now? Wow, I don't know. I I have to think about that. Who's who's doing? Who's killing? Drawing and it isn't good. I mean, I can't think of anybody in that kind of category now. That's you can't think of anybody in John's category. In John's, <laughs> no, but like with so little, I you mean, can't think of anyone because, in that overrated category. Right? No, but with like he had nothing, right? He had two minutes, and he was was he the big draw? You were the nothing. big draw in the well, gig. Well, I mean, I had a close. That was the thing. We were yeah. splitting the money down the middle. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> he would do three minutes on Gary's teeth. But who do you know on the, like that has so little material that's getting what ten grand? He's making. Now that you say it. John might have been the Michael Jordan of overrated. <laughs> yeah. But a typical gig would be like we'd sell out 18 shows because we plugged them on Howard. Because you uh, were there. Yeah. Well, no, we plugged them on Howard. And and John would come out and go, oh, I'm stuttering, John. Gary's got big teeth. <laughs> Carries them in a wheelbarrow. Does anybody on Stern now do personal appearances and, and stand up? Yeah, Shuley does. Okay. Uh, I just worked with Shuley. He opened for me in Cleveland. Uh, we did a theater out there. He killed, he did good. I don't know. Ronnie the limo driver was for a while. And what did uh, he? Have? Did he have an act or? 
Uh, again, Ronnie, again, I love Ronnie, but I think for a while he thought he was George Carlin. <laughs> <laughs> well, his act, I think he had an act. I, yeah, if you consider, what's up, Queens? Yeah, right. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, the, the I, I Beetlejuice know. killed. But, but, just had a blistering set. But hate? that's the power of uh, of Howard show. That's all show. No, me. right, exactly. You know, it, it doesn't matter. You know what you do. You go out there and you can say whatever, and uh, you know people want to see you uh, if yeah. you're on Howard show because his show is so big. Well, it's the same with books. Like I always say, by a book deal now is you have to have a way to promote it. No. Like F. Scott Fitzgerald couldn't get a book based on the the galleys for the Great Gatsby. Right, <laughs> like, right. They go to him. It. Listen, uh, Mr. Fitzgerald, we love the Great Gatsby. Can you get on the Charlemagne show yeah. on BLS? <laughs> 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 can you be a sidekick for a couple of weeks? <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot of great comics out there, and people just never know them. They probably never will. They'll never get that big chance or that, that big draw opportunity. What pisses you off more, when an untalented person makes it uh -huh. or a talented person does it? When a talented person does it, yeah, that's, of course. That's sad. sad. That's totally sad. sad. Yeah. yeah I mean, Who, you know. who's, who's talented uh, that uh, isn't in the forefront? That you would, well, I think you Attell is amazing. We all love him. We think he's so great. But if he if is it not... were proportionate, right. if fame and talent were proportionate, he should be the Michael Jackson of comedy. Totally. Well, you look up to him too, don't you? Absolutely. He's, sure. you know, it's funny because he's the one guy where it's like there's no debate. Like, right. Yeah. Like, nobody right, debates. Right. Yeah. Nobody debates that high and he's low. A comics make it, comic. not make it. Not, not only that, because there's other comics, comics that like people are like oh, I don't know about him. People just take their hats off to David Tell yeah. across the board. Is he like a Jim Norton type guy? I think he's better than Jim Norton for yeah. sure. I, I, yeah, I no love doubt. Jim. I think even Jim would. Jim's say great. That. Yeah, really? Jim would say that too. I think even Jim. Would um, say that. Patrice was another one who yeah, should have been in a, in another stratosphere, but the, you know, but he died obviously. But he but was more so talented. But more people know Bill Bellamy from comedy. Right there, you go. Do you, know, do you know how many nights Patrice probably lost sleep over Bill Bellamy? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Patrice resisted too. So I don't. You know, sometimes you. No, think. but that's what you start to get rebellious yeah. and you you cost yourself work. Yeah. I, I've, I've done that too. That you cause yourself, you know, you, you get rebellious and you say the wrong thing. But isn't that all the great ones that do that? The, the great ones never I, play ball the way they Bill should. Bill Hicks was like that. I'm um, telling you, there's something to that. Yeah. What about uh, Brian Regan? What do you guys think of One of the best ever. I yes, think. I agree. Because he's clean and he's hilarious, right? The, yeah, original. But also one of the best, most original deliveries ever. Yeah, yep. That thing like, hey, you too, if you ever fly. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. Makes me laugh every time. And a great material. Great. Yeah. He was great. So, and he could, great. he could work a wedding for 15-year-olds yeah. or, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah, super talent. Yeah. He's bitter too a little bit, I think. Yeah, I've seen him. Definitely. Is he know? really? Yes. That he's not bigger than he is. Well, all those guys came Dude, up. With, he, he came up with Seinfeld. So yeah. it's like he's a better comic than Jerry Seinfeld. Mm -hmm. No, but Artie, he did. He's a better comic. This is sometimes than think, Jerry Seinfeld. I think Brian Regan is. By I think far. he is too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and, I don't and, think Seinfeld has the level of respect that maybe you think that like amongst comedians. Really? Anyway. Yeah, because it's like a lot of it is about being edgy and some danger in your act. Like the crowd should be like a little bit like thrown and like Seinfeld's none of that. And he he was great for the time. But I, I never don't... belly laughed at him. Yeah. Brian Regan, you belly, you bottled yeah. over laughing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you wow. know, but I, I got no. Well, look, look. I think Curb Your Enthusiasm proves if Larry David's never born, Jerry Seinfeld is still playing governor. I agree. Look, after that, after Seinfeld was over, there was uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm and the Marriage Ref. Right. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Case closed. Yeah, case right. closed. No, I know. I mean, Larry David was a big part of that. <laughs> Brilliant, yeah, Larry David. You know. Brilliant. Uh, Brilliant. You got to meet that other guy. You know. But yeah. then you change gears and you go into a guy like uh, Dice, who uh, I think we all think is brilliant yeah. and uh, yeah. incredible. A and real talented guy. And but it also just yells at the audience and we think it's funny. <laughs> Rebelliousness hurt him a little bit, too, I think, you know. Like, like, like the attitude and stuff like that. Like the great, he came here the night before he was supposed to shoot a Woody well, on the Woody Allen movie, mm -hmm. and he called up and said, "I'm too tired." <laughs> so he crazy. called Woody Allen up and said, "I'm not shooting. I just got off a plane." No. Swear to God. I mean, you know, I, I said, Dice, that's funny, and you go to the movie, but you think Woody Allen's telling his assistant, well, listen, make a note, never call Dice Clay again. <laughs> but what would, what would fuel that? He, here's a big opportunity. I, mean, I don't know how he, he feels about it. He doesn't care, right? Is that what it is? He, does he not care? He cares. He, no, nobody tries, like, to develop a character that hard and not care. But is it a fear thing, maybe, you think? <laughs> but I, no, I think he has a, he, he's a, Dice is a gambler. That's his vice. And really? I think he li yeah, I think he likes to, well, he's not a drinker or a drug guy. Was known to play a few hands of blackjack. Oh, well, you of course. Yeah, yeah. but but he he, uh, he I think he likes that gambling aspect of it. Let me screw it up. Wants to dig I himself a hole so he can dig himself out. Yeah, 
I, I heard, love that aspect of it. I heard a story about uh, back when Pips was around. This yeah. was in Brooklyn, and uh, there was someone on stage or whatever, and Dice, you know, it was, you know, it was just his character. He, he walked in, and he goes, all right, get him off. I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> get him off. <laughs> what are you doing? But get him you're off. You're retarded. <laughs> I, f I love him. No, I, you know, I like him, too. But I, a different kind of thing. You know, yeah. Than Brian Regan. Right, right. It's a whole different type of thing. But uh, he was so fun. But, you know, I don't think the public respects him as much as he deserves. Because to cultivate a character like that and make that explosively funny, people don't realize how hard it is. That, hard that to do. Impossible that is. Listen, hey, yo, that, that's amazing. You get 20,000 people in Madison Square Garden yelling yeah. out, do the mice poem. Yeah, but, <laughs> right. But is that you is know. that really a character? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, he's sort well, of. I don't think he was. Like I'm one of the few people at that Jim Florentine's wedding. I talked to Andrew. I didn't talk to that. Right. <sighs> he pulled me aside. It was actually very touching. He pulled me aside and he goes, "I want to talk to you as Andrew, not Dyke." <laughs> <laughs> so this same is voice. this is one of the funniest conversations. Yeah, same voice. I get same voice. <laughs> All right. This is how the conversation went. We're in Asbury Park at Florentine's wedding. Yeah. He starts giving me advice about life. He goes, "Broads, broads are retarded." They'll destroy you. My second wife was a disaster. This is Andrew. This is Andrew, <laughs> this is Andrew not Dice. This is Andrew. <laughs> not Dice. Or Bukowski. <laughs> yeah, he, he said, uh, brought, uh, my second wife was a disaster in the kitchen. I said, you got, you got ten brothers and sisters. You can't cook an effing chicken. <laughs> I don't want you to do anything. To, I want you to well, have sex with me, and I want a chicken. I want a chicken. So in the middle of him, talk, in the middle of him talking to me, a fire truck goes by, like yeah. to go into a fire, and then Dice came out. He goes, he goes, okay, we get it. You go into the fire. <laughs> Everybody got to know you go into the fire. Uh, yeah, it's a siren. You can't go in the fire without the siren. Put the fire out. <laughs> I don't need to know you're putting the fire out. Say, <laughs> I got a siren. I mean, you see it, like you, him sitting here. It's it's so funny. But Gilbert's impression of him used to sound. Oh like, God, oh, that's that's uh, <laughs> that's a Pulitzer. <laughs> So I'm in bed with this chick, and she looks up at me and goes, Dice, give me, give me, give me, no! <laughs> that's another comics comic right there. People, yeah, comics Gilbert. love him. I love Gilbert. Well, Gilbert would have done better for himself if he wrote another joke after 1978. No. He does the same <laughs> act. Right, right, right. You know, Didn't the, you tell me that the dirtiest joke you ever heard was what he closed with? Well, I was at that Hugh Hefner roast where the aristocrat told that, that aristocrat what it was? joke. Yeah. And they actually, it, they <laughs> never made it. They did a whole documentary about him telling that joke. Yeah. It never made it to the on-air version. <laughs> because it was, it was too dirty even to bleep. Wow. And so they show people <laughs> laughing at that, but he's telling another joke on the air. Oh, no. Really? On the roast? Yeah, on the roast. They, I thought they let everything go on that. It was actually so filthy. <laughs> it was so filthy. And hey, by, by, by the way, I went 11th out of 12th on that roast, okay? Kimmel was the host. I followed Dick Gregory, African-American guy from the 60s. Uh -huh. Basically goes up, doesn't tell a joke, tells you Hefner that without you Hefner, I would have died. He saved my life. Both of them start to cry. Uh -huh. And he goes, this man did more for human rights than anybody in history. They get up, they hug each other. People are standing up. The seven whores dating Hefner are crying, right. okay? <laughs> they hug each other. That moment happens, okay? Yeah. They sit down. Jimmy Kimmel gets up and says this. You'll know our next guest from Hippopotamus Week on, on Discovery <laughs> Channel, Artie Lang. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Mm. I got him back, oh though. Oh, my God. It's my first line was, uh, hey, uh, hey, Hef, I, I can't say it here. Damn it. Hef, I smell penis. Did you burp? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he liked that. I met him at the after party for that. Right, everybody lined up, and I said, "Mr. Hefner, it was a pleasure performing for you." I swear to God, shake my hand. He goes, like this. "I said, Mr. Hefner, pleasure performing for you." Shake my hand. He goes like this. He goes, "I'm tripping." <laughs> <laughs> Is he coherent, that guy? Is, well, I th he looked like he might have been tripping on something, but could you imagine all the memories that guy has? No. And like my face is like disturbing them. Uh. <laughs> Who are you? Who are you? Oh my god, that guy's life. You, you, there's like a video of him like fifth, at 50. He still looks young. You think of all the years he has ahead of him well, of much, banging hot chicks. If you have that much, if you ejaculate that much, yeah. you gotta relax. You know what I mean? What do kind you? of pompous jerk wears a, a, a robe? What like, do you mean, you know, pompous? constantly but having some but form of sex that or something. Is, but that's rock <laughs> right? star. That's ah, rock star. It is. It is he, yeah. Okay, so what's more rock star? In 1971, he got into a robe and never got out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're, okay. it's packed with naked. You just whip your robe open, have sex in the hallway, and then you go hang out. It's like that, you have to have, right? I, I did stand up at the Playboy Mansion once. Oh my God, what's I had that a like? very different experience. Must have been James a Con had there. No, <sighs> I did a show and I bombed because no one was listening to me. 
And um, literally to the point where, <laughs> Rush, you'll appreciate this. <laughs> I had to do 20 minutes to get 10 Gs. Jerry Buss, owner of the Lakers, just talking to these hot chicks who's serving them. No one's listening to me. Right, right, right. I've been there. So I had about six minutes left, and I just started singing the Battle Hymn of the Republic. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get to the top. I said, I want to see how much people aren't listening. And I had to get to the 20 minutes, so right. I went, oh, I wish I was <laughs> in the land of cotton. <laughs> Old times, there are not forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> and then I walked off stage. I got dingy. That's it. That's okay. Funny. All the hot chicks leave. And we're like, when are the broads coming? We're at the grotto. My hand to God, three yellow school buses of Compton hookers pull up. They hired <laughs> hookers. And I mean, like, they look like David Ortiz. But what? Why? Why? <laughs> I don't know, because they want people wanted sex. And they were charging like a grand for oral what? sex. Oh, wait, that's my Oriental. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, give it to Russ. He likes that. Guess up, who Nick. this is? Hansy. Really? Remember Hansy? Who's Hansy? Yeah. You remember Hansy from calling into We the haven't Star talked Star? to Hansy forever. Yeah. He's a maniac. He used to call on a Do you remember Hansy? Uh, Have him call in the show. He calls in here now. So that's the inheritance. I got. Oh, there you go. Nice. <laughs> but Hansy's been extremely uh, perturbed. He's been put off by you. Ignoring well, he's, him. He believes in the Illuminati. Me too. Well, hey, well, we'll get him on the phone then. All right. Yeah, uh, you know, we're going to take go. a break. I'm going to get hands <laughs> on the phone. Yeah. I want to hear that conversation. Do you yeah. totally believe there's a little... He thinks I'm in it, though, and I'm stopping <laughs> He him. might be. And I'm stopping Jay -Z's him. Jay-Z's in it. And, uh, Jay-Z, you think? Yeah, well, it's a possibility. I mean, you know, I, I believe, like, you ever uh, listen to uh, Coast to Coast? No. AM with... Uh, um, I know of it. Yeah, yeah. But what, what, what do they George say? George Neary. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, they say uh, Jay-Z's in the like sha Shadow people. You know you know about that? Shadow people? Yeah, huh? I'll tell you about this off the air. Okay. <laughs> hey, before you go, no, no celebrities are banging those playmates in that mansion during dude, the dude, parties? Dude, I was by far the biggest name there. Talk about disappointing to the hookers. <laughs> isn't it just... Who? Uh, <laughs> isn't it Spade and, and uh, Rob Schneider? Isn't it just those two? I haven't seen them there. Because in the old days. Yeah, that was the old days, yeah. But the, the Summer Nights party, that's the one to go to. The old days are real. Like yeah. this, all the big guys are in there. Just... But this chick who looked like, yeah, Will Chamberlain would live there. James Con James Con's wife would throw him out of the house and he'd go to the Playboy Mansion. <laughs> oh Who's God, winning that days. argument? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Back after this. The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on Audience, only on DirecTV.